Greetings. So there is a variety of great tools for robot operation and analysis. In general, however, they require some sort of robot description file in XML. The creation process for these XML files is unfortunately not very conducive to early exploration of kinematic concepts. So I created a Blender add-on uh, to help with that. Let's take a look. So step one, let's go to GitHub and grab the raw code. There are, of course, other ways to do this. Go into Blender and paste in the code, run the script, back to our 3D view. So that has added some new tools under the Object Constraints window. All right, let's start off uh, making some links. Go ahead, call this body we want. Um, yep, let's check this not linked. Good. Let's make it small. And we're going to start off with just a little small. Yaw joint. That's, that's maybe a little much. There. And then one final link down there. Alright, so very important to apply the scale to these. And so we can go through and give them mass properties on each of the links. The links are the only thing that get mass properties. Okay, and now let's add empties to serve as the joints. I recommend using the arrow type empties so that we can um, get more information as to the, the axes of them without having to go through any effort to do so. But in theory, you could use any kind of object. So I'm going to change them to a joint type. And then we're going to duplicate them where we want them. Okay. And now let's go through and assign the properties. So we can give each of them a parent and a child. This one, uh, we want to be a, a yaw joint. So we're going to actually pick Z. Uh, we could have also rotated the object. But let's not do that. Okay, so sign the parent and child for this second joint. Again, it'll be Revolute and X. We have a sort of a yaw pitch shoulder here. Uh, our elbow, again, same procedure. We're going to leave it as X, so it's a pitch joint. And then finally, this wrist, we're going to turn into a roll joint by picking Y. So now we select our body that we want to use as a root and hit export. My tool claims success and voila. Indeed, that is what we modeled. We can see the yaw behavior, we can see the pitch behavior, and we can see the roll behavior on that wrist. Great. Okay, so This tool is actually exporting the meshes that we have modeled in Blender. So we can do stuff like this. And I apologize, I'm not doing a fantastic job. So if we want to move that joint up there, create some geometry representing a hinge, export. And bam, look at that. We have now moved the hinge point and we have that new geometry that we modeled. Fantastic. Okay, now we can take advantage of Blender's loop, 
looped linked duplicate system to create a second arm over here. And so this joint here you can see has retained body as its parent and has link.004 as the child which happens to be this object. Very good. But doing it in this way brings us the advantage where the meshes are linked so if I create a monkey over here it creates a monkey over there. And now when I export look at that, we got two monkeys, two arms everything is very happy. Okay, Now one limitation of course is that they're not fully symmetrical. And so uh, we could do that with a copy location which I'm actually going to put on this one here. Um, so we could say copy location of joint joint but invert the Y. So now if we're working on our original side and we move this somewhere, the other one will follow. Can move it back. So you can use the sort of traditional built into Blender kind of constraints and parenting and all those things uh, to link together your systems uh, in useful ways. I'm not going to do the whole arm like this. Okay, now let's say that we need to add another arm here. We want this to branch. doesn't just have to branch right at the beginning. It can branch later down the line. And then if we look at this one, its parent is not body, but is in fact this guy here. So now we export this. We will get this sort of two and a half armed or three armed cube. Uh, it's getting a little terrifying. And uh, so if it's too terrifying and we just want to focus on a subset, right? Let's say, um, let's give this, give this one some, some uniqueness to it. Um, and let's say we just want to focus on this, on this branch here. We can export just this one and we're left with just that one. Great. Um, so the Blender tool does support making closed loop constraints. Um, you know, making links and joints that would connect these two things. Uh, however, my uh, sort of viewing tool that I hacked together uh, doesn't seem to support those. So I'm not going to show that today. All right. And the last thing that I want to look at is the prismatic joint. Um, it's maybe that's a little, maybe that's a little aggressive. Um, so we can create a new joint up here. We can create a new cube. Move it up there. Oh man, that cube went all the way over there. And then we can assign the parent and child objects for this. And in this case, we want to be prismatic in X. Export as root. All right. And, and I forgot to apply the scale. So let's do that again. Perfect. So now we will see that cube slide off on its prismatic joint. Beautiful. Okay, so that uh, kind of concludes the introduction to this SDF tool. Uh, hopefully you find it useful. Thanks.